Z anti, uh, anticipating the coming evil, Vladimir Solovyov's eschatology, Christ versus Antichrist. Uh, my presentation is in two sections, but um, I'd like to preface um, these two sections with a little prolegomena. Uh, first to say why um, this topic is uh, of importance to us, and um, uh, then to clarify a bit uh, my methodology of this, uh, of this study. Uh, First of all, why, uh, why the topic is important? Uh, the relevancy of this uh, topic, uh, on my point of view, uh, there are two reasons for this. First is the theoretical interest of the history of philosophy, and the second is practical interest of religious consciousness. Um, I think uh, it is quite clear, uh, because theoretical interest uh, um, always uh, uh, revolves around the topic such uh, uh, whether um, Vladimir Solovyov says this or that, and uh, uh, we had even today the burning discussion uh, around these topics. Uh, and the practical interest uh, of religious consciousness, um, it is the interest whether really uh, Solovyov was uh, a prophet, probably, or a uh, false prophet. Uh, so, um, in order to um, avoid uh, misunderstanding of uh, what Solovyov is saying, I think uh, the first point is to avoid uh, considering Solovyov uh, as a kind of a frozen image philosopher, because uh, it, it is very often um, comes uh, the case when um, Solovyov is considered uh, just a thing uh, in itself, so to say, uh, as if uh, he was not a living man, as if uh, he had no history at all, uh, as if uh, his um, uh, views had no uh, any development or probably evolution. Uh, so, um, in my study, I tried to uh, avoid uh, this uh, view on Solovyov as a frozen image, um, considering his um, eschatology, first of all, in the historical aspect. Uh, and um, to consider this in historical aspect, I, I will not uh, uh, agree with um, Jan Krasnitsky. Uh, I was astonished today uh, when he said that he uh, rethought his uh, former ideas, and now he believes that uh, if I rightly grasp the idea uh, that Solovyov had no sense of evil, which uh, was the key point of his, uh, I believe, classical book, uh, God, Man, and Evil. Uh, so the historical aspect, um, Krasitsky said um, that uh, the accord of the evil must be added uh, to the few symphonic accords of all unity, Godmanhood, and Sophia. And I completely subscribe to this view. Um, oh, and uh, I believe we can uh, even find the proof of this uh, in uh, the latter. Uh, Vladimir Solovyov to Ekaterina Romanova from 27th January 1872. Uh, Solovyov uh, wrote, there is true life in us, but it is suppressed, distorted, by our limited person, our selfishness. We should be aware of this true life, what it is in itself, in its purity, clarity, and with which means we can attain it. 
All this has already been revealed to humankind by true Christianity long ago. But Christianity itself, in its history, suffered the influence of that false life, that evil which it should have destructed. But this falsehood so darkened and covered Christianity that in the present it is equally hard to grasp the truth in Christianity as much as to reach these truths directly with a personal effort. So I argue that actually uh, it is very beginning of Solovyov's philosophy. It is 1872, and he wrote these uh, this, uh, things, uh, and uh, he um, takes for his main purpose, uh, the main purpose of his intellectual activities, um, therefore is the apologetic, Christian apologetic. Uh, so, uh, with this um, more um, or less uh, deep uh, sense of evil, um, we can't measure these depths, of course. Um, but uh, it, it is the starting point of his philosophical career. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that all the uh, uh, Philosophical activity of uh, Vladimir Solovyov can be divided into three periods with uh, uh, three uh, turning points or three turns. Uh, the first uh, is uh, the early uh, 70s, 1870s uh, to the late uh, 1870s. Uh, it is the period when uh, I call this uh, theoretical period and uh, this uh, piece from the latter uh, is uh, actually the proof that this theoretical period, period began. began. Uh, so uh, this theoretical period um, is the period when Solovyov tries to find the remedy against, um, against evil, uh, first of all, epistemic evil, which he sees in uh, positivist uh, conceptions um, and um, uh, that is the period of his uh, famous <clears throat> The Crisis of the Western Philosophy, 1874, uh, the philosophical foundations of the um, integral uh, knowledge, uh, 1877, um, an experience of systematic philosophy. Uh, so um, Solovyov tries to provide the system of this systematic or integral philosophy uh, to overcome the epistemic evil, which uh, he believes um, uh, make, makes actually no good to, to his contemporaries. Uh, but, but this uh, 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 attempt uh, to find the uh, uh, or formulate uh, synthetic uh, knowledge um, turns to be an utopia. Uh, first of all, be because uh, uh, if it is, uh, it doesn't have um, practical use. Uh, so, and this use, uh, it, it, it was not supposed uh, actually, if, if we consider all these theoretical uh, works above mentioned. Uh, so, uh, there comes um, uh, the downfall of this uh, the, uh, theoretical um, or epistemic optimism. Uh, and uh, there comes the second period, which begins somewhere uh, in the late 1870s. Uh, which I call the practical period. Practical period, uh, it is the period which is known as the period of the um, ideas of theocracy. Um, here Solovyov tries to, to find the remedy against uh, social evil, first of all, and he uh, sincerely believes 
that um, he can um, do good with his philosophy, his practical philosophy. Probably he will be heard. Uh, and um, uh, uh, there can be attained uh, this ideal. But this ideal um, also uh, suffers uh, the downfall. And this downfall is rather psychological and um, theoretical. Um, there comes uh, somewhere in the early 1980s, uh, there comes a personal crisis um, in Solovyov, as it is well known. Um, I may assume that this crisis uh, was, uh, first of all, connected with uh, his um, awareness of his inability to find the final solution to the issue of the individual death. And uh, that was a great problem for him. Um, and this, uh, 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 so to say, inflate all these uh, ideas of theocracy for him psychologically uh, and uh, theoretically as well. And then comes the third period, uh, and uh, I may say that is a mystical uh, turn, uh, turn. By the way, um, this, uh, the period of theocracy includes uh, the works, uh, lectures on Godmanhood, uh, the critique of abstract principles, the spiritual foundations of life, so um, uh, the history and future of theocracy, uh, Lydie Rousse, uh, the Russia and the uh, Universal Church. Um, and then comes this crisis which <clears throat> uh, Solovyov tries to overcome um, theoretically as well, uh, writing the meaning of love and the justification of the good. He tries to find the solutions to, to this, uh, especially in the meaning of love. Uh, he tries to find uh, this uh, solution to this uh, you know, ultimate uh, fate uh, of all living creatures and, and men as well uh, as uh, individual deaths. Uh, and actually, uh, he doesn't find any other solution, but uh, the, the nearest solution, um, uh, he tries to shelter himself in eschatology. Uh, and here comes uh, the uh, uh, famous war, pro war progress and the end of history, three conversations, including a short story of the Antichrist in 900. How much time? Oh. Uh, so we have enough time because uh, we finished uh, before. Uh, Thank so, uh, you. Uh, no, no, but, but uh, yeah. You can speak also half an hour. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, I should not do hurry. Yeah? <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, because uh, I'm nervous a bit when, when I'm under the time pressure. Uh, so, well, um, uh, uh, that what uh, I've been saying about about these uh, three. Uh, periods uh, in Solovyov's works and three turns. So uh, uh, I'll just repeat uh, th three turns. It is the first turn uh, uh, comes around 1872. It is the theoretical terms. Uh, it opens the um, theoretical period, the period when Solovyov tries to um, enshape uh, the system of systematic philosophy. Uh, then another turn comes around 18. Uh, uh, 70, when he launches his uh, uh, theocratic and social uh, projects, and the third turn comes uh, in the late 1890s, uh, probably in uh, 1898, um, when uh, he um, comes to uh, mystics, mystics uh, and uh, epistemology. Um, so, 
uh, that uh, what about um, uh, the history of this topic. Uh, so Solovyov has uh, the sense of evil and he tries to overcome this evil. Uh, however, in a, uh, each other period of time, in each other um, stage of his project, uh, and if we schematize this, we, we can uh, see that uh, first he um, comes uh, with the uh, epistemic optimism, uh, and he believes that uh, the problem is that people uh, do not know how to know. Uh, then uh, he broadens his view and uh, says that they must not only uh, to know well and to, uh, to have the good knowledge, but they also need uh, uh, to live well, and uh, this uh, uh, welfare uh, actually believed um, relied on the, on the state, uh, and the state must provide people with these conditions to live good. Uh, but then comes uh, comes the personal crisis uh, when all these uh, earthly goods uh, just um, suffer the shipwreck uh, because everyone is mortal, uh, and. Uh, this opens uh, the depths, uh, and Solovyov uh, comes to eschatology uh, as the ultimate answer to the big questions, uh, big question of evil. Uh, I consider this last period uh, of Solovyov as, uh, so to say, uh, as a return to the shipfold of Christianity. Uh, from the desert of, uh, of the secular. Um, and then if, uh, if we look at uh, Solovyov's um, meta, uh, eschatology in its metaphysical as uh, aspect, uh, we may say that first of all, he considers the big question of evil. Um, and uh, eschatology is uh, Mm, the nearest solution to this uh, big question. This question has a particular, um, so to say, hypothesis, um, which is the hypothesis of, of the problem of death, which is looming at Solovio, and uh, he, he tries to solve it. But it also has uh, another, uh, another aspect. Uh, there is social, um, evil, uh, there is natural evil, and uh, Solovyov is quite aware of all this. Uh, but um, he believes, um, trying to um, uh, formulate these ideas, uh, he uh, turns uh, and refers to, uh, to the experience of the church and uh, to uh, the gospel, to the tradition of the church and to the story of um, Antichrist. Um, he believes that uh, as uh, Christ had uh, uh, his manifestation um, uh, coming in flesh, uh, in, uh, taking the human nature, uh, so the Antichrist comes at the end of time as the maximum of, uh, of the universal evil, of the universal evil. And um, in order to tempt, tempt uh, those who, um, whom he can seduce, uh, uh, but all this um, can hardly be considered in a rational way, and so of you as well aware of it. Uh, and uh, um, actually, if we read the three conversation and the story of Antichrist, we may uh, we may note that uh, um, uh, it is rather an anticipation of evil than uh, any positive knowledge to which uh, Solovyov uh, strive for. Uh, in the first, second period. Um, and another thing is that he believes, he believes um, that this 
ultimate evil is still going to come, to reveal itself as the natural evil. Um, to reveal itself. Uh, when the natural evil is common to all human beings, both uh, will be destroyed in the ultimate eschatological action, through not with any human effort, which does not reach its end, remaining unfruitful, but by Christ himself with the power of his God-manhood. So, uh, the final solution of the problem of evil and eschatology, why Solvio needs eschatology, is the fulfillment of uh, the fulfillment and ultimate salvation that comes uh, by Christ. Uh, that, I think, is the end of my presentation and uh, what I, I had to say here. Thank you. Thank you.